How have you evaluated the run defense the last couple of weeks, and why do you think it slipped a little? Um, so I, you say, I'm sorry, say that one more time? Uh, the run defense, how have you evaluated it the last few weeks, and why do you think it slipped a little bit compared to earlier in the season when you guys um, shut down Kenneth Parker? I think the bodies, you know, from a standpoint of having um, all your horses a little bit for injuries um, and guys having to play a lot of snaps. You know, you look at D. Lyman playing 60 snaps a game, 50 snaps a game because <clears throat> of depth. Um, I also think, you know, when you have guys out like, you know, last game, not having your starting linebacker in the game who – you know, it's been a big part of why you have had, <clears throat> you know, success against teams like Michigan State running the ball. So I think as you have some of those pieces missing, the continuity of that unit, um, when a team is just committed to running the ball 50, 60, 70, whatever the time is a game, I think that does hurt you. Um, schematically, I have to do a better job of making sure um, we set edges, um, that we keep the ball in spaces where we can gang tackle and run to the football and we don't give up our edges a little bit. So... I think the combination of those things, but at the end of the day, um, I have to find ways to put whoever's on the field in position to make sure that a team doesn't just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, um, and become one-dimensional where they can get gains on us like that. You obviously mentioned uh, Cam's injury there. I mean, first, or not, not injury, I guess, sickness. And do you have any sense about his possibility for return? And what did, how did you evaluate the guys that uh, had to step up and play in his spot on Saturday? Um, I'm, I'm hoping Cam feels better and he's able to roll. Um, um, and I think we were inconsistent. The guys that had to come in and play, I think we were inconsistent. Um, I think we um, – they played with great effort and energy and, you know, they're, they're part of this team and worked their butts off. Um, but I thought – I think some of the inconsistency showed up in some of the fits we had, some of the plays we gave up. Um, but, like I said, I think every guy that's on that field, they're giving effort and they're trying to do it the best job they can. And like I said, it's, that's my position at linebacker for one. Um, and so I, I just, again, I have to do a better job of putting those guys in the right positions to make the plays for our defense and our team. Um, and it, you see at times we, we go out there and we play very consistent football. We execute. We make a team go the long haul and make them punt. You know, you have, what, seven three and outs in the game. You, you make them punt nine times. So I think – you see that in stretches of really good football play. And then you see times where something happens and you're inconsistent and, and you give up a big explosive play. So, again, every week we got to keep bridging that gap of where's the defense that had nine punts of 16 drives, right, as opposed to the defense that gave, you know, sudden change, give up a touchdown on one play. we got to find that balance. I have to find that balance of making sure we call things where our guys can execute and not have a bust that leads to explosive plays. tackling in the, in the last game just seemed to take a, a little bit of a step back than what we've seen, the high standard that's been there. What do you make, do to make sure that that doesn't become a problem again and just, just make sure that the, the, the kind of aggressive taking guys to the ground continues going forward? Um, it's fundamentals and drill work, simple as that. I think um, guys, we tackle a certain way. We uh, attack, uh, attack a ball carrier a certain way. <clears throat> we talk a lot about killing the motor. Um, and I thought what you saw on Saturday was guys using their shoulders to make some tackles. Well, these are big-time players, okay? They run through shoulder tackles. And so that's not who we are as a defense. And so I think that gets back to the fundamental premise of what we do in practice every day of making sure we're stressing form tackle, uh, near leg, near shoulder, kill the motor with our, with our contact levels. And so we didn't do that, I think, as a group on, on Saturday. We had some plays that were behind the line of scrimmage. We didn't finish them. You know, those got to be – it has to be negative three, not plus one. Put a team behind the six. So, I think that's going to be, like it is every week, a big focus in practice and making sure our guys are finishing the right way um, and fundamentally teaching that as coaches. You mentioned it in your first statement about your, your defensive line guys having to play so many plays. I know part of that, obviously, is with the offense struggling, you're just out there for more plays. But – are you uh, surprised at all or, or sort of where you've been through the course of this that you haven't had more depth there and more guys sort of step up during the course of the season who could take valuable snaps? I don't know if it's about guys not stepping up. I think you play, you're playing, you know, there's, there's levels to your defense and guys that play and there's young, really young guys. And I think guys, when they get their opportunity, they are going in and playing their butts off. They are trying really, really hard. Um, but, you know, Ryder came here as a transfer. He's a starter. Weston came here as a transfer. He's a starter. I mean, so those guys came here because there was a need. 
And so I think as much as you can, you want to keep guys fresh. And as you play, you know, as games get down to critical moments, you know, obviously you're going to ride with your starters as much as you can. Um, but we got to just keep building depth. I think guys like Bo are doing a great job. CO is giving us great minutes and great snaps. Um, and I think you just keep rocking those guys along. But when a guy get injured, when a guy gets injured and you're too deep during a game and has to miss plays, you know, Weston went down, Ryder went down, then the depth you came into the game with is now even less, right? Because you're not getting four deep at every position ready to play a game. So when you then lose guys for eight, 10, 12 snaps, then that puts more stress on the backup and the, his backup. So that's what ends up happening is it's not necessarily the depth you go into the game with. It's the depth that happens once you lose game as the game goes on. I think uh, Minnesota's second in the league and running the ball. What, what, makes, what are the ingredients that they have that makes them so good in that part of the game? Six nine three fifty. 350. <laughs> they have really big humans up front blocking. Um, <clears throat> they've done a tremendous job of getting, I don't know, they might be the biggest offensive line in the country. I haven't seen many guys as big as that tackle. Um, and then, you know, they go two tight end sets, but really it's a six offensive lineman. So they get sets with six old linemen, seven old linemen, and they are committed to handing the ball off. And I think that's what makes their scheme tough. One, they're committed to it. They have their identity, and they, they get a lot, of, a lot of beef up front and try to knock you off the ball and wear you down. And, you know, there's gains of one and gains of two and gains of two, and then it becomes gains of five as you watch their games. And they just try to wear you down. So we got to do a great job of um, holding our edges, finding ways to get them behind the sticks, um, finding ways for them to not just be able to operate freely at gains of five and six a chunk with their linemen, um, with, with their running game, with their big linemen up front. Uh, Coach, um, it's obviously something that's kind of out of your control, but last game the offense turned the ball over six times. In a lot of those instances, it, it set the Rutgers offense up with goal to go, not even in the red zone, but 10 yards or less to go. How challenging does that make it for you guys, but how can you combat turnovers like that and you know, get out of the situation so it doesn't wear the defense down? Um, that, that's our job. Whenever, no matter where the ball is and how it gets there, our job is to keep them out the end zone. And so we have to, we call it sudden change. At any moment, you got to be ready to grab your helmet, buckle it up, and go on the field and do your job. So whether the ball's on a negative 40, or the, the positive 10, for us, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't get us discouraged or anything. Our job is to go out there and stop them. And you saw that game, I think, you know, on three of them, we made them kick a field goal and punt twice. And on the other three, we didn't. So for us, we have the mentality that it doesn't matter how the ball got there, right? Our job is to keep the ball out of the end zone or take it away and give it back to our offense. And I think it's a mindset, you know, you instill that from day one of your defense. It ain't going to always go great, right? And this is a team. And to play complimentary football, we better take the ball away. If they got, they got six, why didn't we get six? You know, and so we control what we can control. We control our execution. We control our mindset. And so for us, we got to go to the field and do our job. And so no, no matter what the situation is in the game, we got to be mentally prepared to go out there and execute. Yep, thank you guys. Have a good day.